and welcome back everyone welcome back to our second broadcast of the day we started the day with ksl with the korean starcraft league we wrapped that up a couple of hours ago and now we have returned with our second broadcast our second of three as uh <laughs> in a couple of hours we are going to be covering world team league wtl is in an hour and 20 minutes or so so we actually don't really have that much time unfortunately uh, just because there's just so much going on here this weekend but i did want to cover we did want to cover a couple of matches here of something very special of something known as the scion craft cup 2023 here we go it's going to be a two-day event day one is today the group stage and day two is going to be the playoff bracket that is tomorrow as well so a lot of games are going to be had a lot of matches are being played out exclamation mark b in the chat if you guys want to have a link at the bracket i should uh update the nightbot <laughs> i don't think it's quite updated yet so i'll get on it papi i'll get on it um one moment please as i do look for the bracket command there we go bam Okay, back in his life, and it's going to be a really interesting tournament. I did see a couple of people were asking about it, and I myself am a little bit in the dark. Um, essentially, this is an event that allows you to play your main race. Yes, that is true. You can play your main way, your main race once in a best of series. In a best of three, you play it once, and then you are forced to play a different race entirely. Um, it looks like the people behind Scion Craft have been constructing their own races. Uh, it's really cool to see they've made three unique races. Let me just quickly get the names. Uh, it is the Kron, 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 the Kron race, Genetron, and Zayid, and Zayid as well. Which uh, they look really interesting. I appreciate how unique they look, and we're going to be able to get into that. I say unique, they look. Um, aesthetically, they look pretty similar to what we are used to when it comes to Zerg, Terran, and Protoss. Uh, but mechanically, when it comes to the nitty-gritty, the units themselves, the resources, the income, the way the macro works, everything else is really well thought out. And you can tell that there's been a lot of passion and a lot of thought put into constructing these races. So it's really cool to see. Uh, it's always amazing to see how um, these people, like, they've kind of brought their theory to life and and they want it to be shown to the rest of the world as well um this is how if i'm not mistaken oh my god what is it called immortal gate of pyre i think i think that's what it was initially started as a modern starcraft and then they're doing their own game and ah, there's potential here as well there is definitely potential um for how this will turn out meanwhile we are getting ready um if you do look at the bracket itself we can actually take a moment ourselves to switch our scenes and try to get a read on what is going on. I don't know how well it'll look here. Bam. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, not too sure how well, how well it'll look here. But we do have four groups. Four groups of five in total. Um, ooh, races are being picked. Uh, but four groups of five. And a lot of a lot of pro players are getting involved as well. Dark is here. Hero is here as well. Um, so we have some... Korean pro, Korean pro players. We have Eggs, the Colombian Zerg. We have Mia Micah from Vietnam, the Zerg player, the King of the Sea. We have Hon Mono from Japan. We have Jomek from Poland uh, and many others as well. We have Wayne and Geralt as well. So it is really cool to see all these players come together and... Oh boy, like we have a bunch of amateur players who have been a part of this scene who I would imagine know more about the individual races. And then we have a bunch of pro players in, as well that of course are damn good at the game itself um but maybe a little bit less so when it comes to some of these other races and here we go we're diving into our first series it is going to be jamek versus cognite let's go <laughs> i don't know what i'm i don't know what i'm getting into so uh when it comes to my knowledge about this mod and about the custom races i know very little i know the bare i know less than the bare minimums i don't know what i'm getting into um i'd be appreciative if maybe even some people in the chat like let us know a couple of tidbits uh some information about what is going on here um we even have like a little bit of yeah an explanation zayed genetron and kiron or kiron sorry but here we go spawning in the bottom right hand corner of death aura we have oh, the old map pool oh let's go we have old maps coming into play as well romanticide golden wall we'll get into it but in the bottom right hand corner we have the polish protoss player representing team blazer picking the race genetron it is jomek oh i pressed the wrong button hold on <laughs> 
and spawning in the top left hand corner we have his opponent picking a regular standard protoss race from the platinum heroes it is cognite now again you can pick a standard starcraft race in this best of three it's a best of three by the way you can pick a, a regular um standard starcraft race but only once only once in this best of three and it's very interesting to see jomek go for genitron already uh, for those who may not be familiar with jomek he is a protoss player a polish protoss player there are many of them but really interesting to see him go for one of the more obtuse races instead and i am i am ready <laughs> what the hell is about to happen? What are these units called? Converters. Okay, okay, okay. So, from my understanding, the Genitron race is obviously styl stylized off of Protoss. Yes, you know, you can you can tell that aesthetically. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure these are some Tempest Wings <laughs> that have been thrown onto the building itself. They use uh, in-game assets to kind of bring everything together. You can you can kind of tell that here. I think that those are parts of the Cyber Core. Um, thrown down as part of the gas geyser it's really interesting to see um i do appreciate how buildings are warped in kind of like um kind of like the protoss race and the protoss buildings i believe you just have to throw it down you don't have to rush into it oh, sorry you don't have to dedicate a worker to continue to construct a building um i believe many of the races are quite like that. oh i spoke i spoke too soon i guess some of them you do <laughs> wait is this one constructing as well i think it is okay okay no there you go fair enough um, we do have you do have to dedicate a unit here to construct said building uh, meanwhile I guess charge is on the way it does look like a charge variant here from this edifice um, I guess that's a tech building kind of like a cyber core s sort of building uh, meanwhile back at home standard opener gate expand into a cyber core nothing too fancy here from cognite um, nothing too out of the norm no cheese thankfully so we can actually sink our teeth into this game it's gonna be a stargate opener which I'm not too sure if that's a good or a bad thing against a, gen a genitron race um i guess we'll find out <laughs> uh -huh. behind this we got a couple of no sorry we have a couple we have additional edifices okay so i guess we use this for creating units otherwise we wouldn't be making more than one we have a sanctum as well um and oh wait mate we're just we're throwing everything down <laughs> we're throwing it all down but what does it mean we're gonna find out yo we got some units oh my god hello pariahs Wait, can we warp them in wherever? Vaults? Materializing. Okay. Interesting. Um, so it looks like we... Obviously, we don't need pylons. That's something to bear in mind. We don't need pylons. We don't need the pylon kind of... Uh, the aura around them to throw down structures. And yeah, we're just... I, I guess maybe they have to... It has to be near... Uh, within a range of a building to actually warp something in. Charge is done. I imagine that affects the pariah here. Charge those esque units, and so far, good control out of Jomek is able to pull back against the Adept. The Adept, of course, trying to thread in the shade and even get a scout of the main base looking at the vision. We were able to get eyes on some tech, um, additional edifices. Okay, so it looks like, okay, I imagine edifices allow for like one warp in each. Yeah, we have charges. Oh, I can see. Let's go. We do have charges on the building themselves. And I'm pretty sure that you use said charges to warp in, essentially. Um, and they charge over time. You can see the, you can see it here actually so it does does make sense um unfortunately with our ui we actually can't hover over units and we can't see tooltips uh that would actually be really useful uh, <laughs> as the oracle is coming in and we're looking for some economic damage here and we're going to be able to get quite a lot already five workers do go down very limited anti-air available here unfortunately for jomek um as of course the prize do not shoot up alas behind this cognite just getting into a third base getting into additional oracles as well to harass immortal production has begun as well i'm curious as to I'm really actually curious about how Cognite approaches this as well and how familiar he is with this race and how he constructs his army as well. Um, that's going to be a pretty big part about Protoss tech-wise as well, kind of how they want to bring things together. Uh, going for something like Immortals this early on is really interesting here. Staying on a low gateway count, going straight into a bay, actually. Oh, my God. Very greedy. Jesus. Oh, this is all this is all off of one gateway, so Cognite... Despite him going up against a pro player, he is getting away with quite a lot of greed. He comes in, he can one-shot workers, of course, with two oracles. That isn't even, even applicable here. Ooh, as the vaults are able to keep up, and even though their range may be short, it looks like they do have some anti-air available, so they do push away said oracles. But again, uh, Cognite, he's getting away with so much, and I imagine this is something that you could probably do here, especially when we're exploring the game. But Jomek is pushing out, and Cognite has very little to defend. We have a shield battery overcharge. We're about to have three gateways to warp in. We have one immortal. 
And yeah, Cognite has just been too greedy. And I, I think Jomek may just be able to roll over here. We're moving out. We've got some Dragoon-esque units here, which I did take note of earlier. They're, oh, they're like crabs. <laughs> the Pulsars. I believe they have kind of like a, like a siege, not a siege ability, but a projectile that they do shoot. And here we go. We can just collapse on this army. Overcharge is pop. We can focus down the shield battery. Shield battery is going to go down. Oh, never mind. Sorry. They have a bit of a channel effect instead. And with set effects, Jomek is going to be able to burst through this army, burst through the shield battery as well. There's almost nothing left. There's only a single immortal remaining. And yeah, Cognite maybe not respecting his opponent enough, maybe not aware of what the or the potential here of what Jomek's army could really hold. And it's a little bit cut and dry, but essentially Cognite was just cutting a lot of production in favor of a lot of tech. And yeah, he rushed into a third base. He loses his entire mineral line and Cognite just does not have much remaining here. Uh, Volt is going to be able to... Oh, he's got trying to break on through, I should say. But alas, the wall is a little bit too strong. Uh, looks like these units themselves don't actually do a lot of damage to buildings. So the Colossus is going to be able to hold on to that natural. But alas, the third base is going to be going down behind this. Chargers are coming in. I <laughs> These Volt units are really interesting to me. They're so small. And it, it doesn't seem like their DPS is quite low. But because there are so many of them, it does add up. It's almost like a ranged Zergling, actually. Uh, it does remind me a little bit of that. Um, interesting. It looks like they are sentries on legs, like visually, <laughs> like model wise. I appreciate it. Uh, as Jomek is going to be turning back around from here again, his macker has been looking solid, throwing down additional edifices. So again, uh, we were able to piece together that it does seem like they have charges available with them and they're able to, to warp in essentially with said charges. And we're just amassing a, a quote unquote gateway, a mass gateway army, a mass edifice army is may maybe a better way to put it coming into this um also i did notice that the pulsar i don't think the pulsars were able to attack the shield battery earlier you know we're diving in oh my god their charge is crazy <laughs> jesus i mean they're glass cannons and the the pariahs they're dying they're dying quite quickly but that was wild okay no they can't attack buildings um yeah this mass army here from jomek i mean it did well earlier but against these colossi it's just melting and maybe, maybe I should kind of correlate them a little bit more with Lings, right? It seems to be that they are more light-based units, and these Colossi have their way with them. Cognite able to hold on, and we're getting into a longer game. I thought things were going to be over here once the third base was broken. Cognite, he was able to defend with the bare minimum, with a single shield, but with a single Colossus. And now he's surviving, he's getting into a fourth base, and he's up heavily in workers. He's up in economy, he's looking strong. Jomek struggling a little bit more behind this. Oh my god. I love it. They're just, yeah, they're like, they're like materializing into existence. <laughs> now I'm curious. Okay. So again, this is the, it, it feels weird calling it a gateway centric army. I guess an edifice centric army, like a, like a swarm army. Maybe, maybe that's a better term to use here. Um, but I wonder if you will make, oh, what higher form of tech is available here to, to the Genitrons as yeah, the vaults once again are warped in, they're going to be able to defend. They take down one of those oracles in one shot, essentially pretty impressive. Um, but I'm curious to see what the next form of tech is going to be here for Jomek. I imagine he has to if he wants to break through these Colossi. Because the Colossi are having their way with this flimsy army, to be honest. Um, it was impressive earlier, and we are amassing them, don't get me wrong. That's that's a lot of pariahs, Bappy. Um, oh my god, that's crazy. What is this? Conduit. Okay, you got my attention. We got a conduit, we got... Uh... El Elysium? <laughs> Elysium, there we go. What does this mean? Well, we're going to find out. Uh, <laughs> as here comes wave number three here, still heavily reliant on pure pariah vault, essentially. Um, we now have a new unit, actually, a crux. Okay, show us what you got. It looks not very elegant, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Reminds me almost like, um, what are they called from Halo? Abathur? No, not Abathur. You know what I'm talking about. That guy. <laughs> the elites. There we go. As we're gonna be, oh my god, what? Oh, they can shade in! They're not charging! That was crazy! I, lo I love the visual of that. It looks so cool. Um, they're gonna be able to try to amass on this army. We have plenty of Colossus and Archons, and may this army melt before the splash damage of Cognite. Give me a couple of Archons, two Colossus, and may we can just eat that for breakfast. Yomek, he just cannot engage. That's the third time this has happened now. And after the second time, you'd think he would have learned his lesson. But at the same time, I'm sure Yomek is also exploring this unit and exploring this composition. Um, but again, like given 
how much splash damage we have available here for Cognite. This is clearly not working. I also wasn't fully aware of what the Crux was able to do. Um, we do have a couple of... Uh, a couple of spells available again i don't have to, we don't have tool tips available here in this ui so i'm not entirely sure what the crux can do unfortunately um but i look forward to it behind this fourth base is being taken cognite working on his fifth and it does feel like cognite he's getting out of hand here he's getting out of control and uh it's, yeah it's one of those things where i mean i'm not entirely sure what jome can tech into here to try to deal with this again like i was really curious to see any kind of higher form of tech um but so far we're not really going for it jome just relying on this more swarm toss style or swarm genitron style maybe that maybe i'll call it like that <laughs> oh my god I, I i love that ability it just it looks so satisfying it's so quick it's it's like a it's like a charge slash shade forward um, it passes through units, uh, is what I did notice as well. But I'll be honest, I think Cognite, he's about to do something that uh, StarCraft Protoss does quite well, and we're going to aim it. We're gonna <laughs> We've amassed this death ball of an army from Cognite, and uh, he is just rushing across the map. Meanwhile, the Zelts are also just wreaking havoc here in the mineral line, and Jomek, unfortunately, just cannot deal with this. Not with this kind of army composition, not at all. And yeah, we are just going to be collapsing on this army. I will be going over the chat uh, in a moment here to to go over, um, you know, may maybe some little tidbits. And GG is going to get called Cognite takes game number one. GG, well played. Bearing in mind that Cognite is more of a master's player. Um, so to be able to go up against a GM like that, impressive. I am very impressed here. GG, well played. Cognite able to weather the storm. Initially, things were looking scary for him. Again, like, what Cognite was doing felt illegal. He was getting away with so much greed in the early game. He got away with being on one gateway up until three bases. He had very, he had very few units to defend. He was punished for it. He did end up losing his third. Yes, that is true. But once he was able to amass... Yeah, solid composition, able to amass, you know, splash damage. He was able to survive, able to retaliate, able to take game one. And now Cognite is up one to zero. And I will go over the chat. Uh, and I will try to try to be informed here on uh, some of the ins and outs of of the Genitron race because I'm I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Shout out to um, Sudoku. Sudoku. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it appreciate letting us know a little bit more about the game itself oh god there's a lot to catch up on there's a lot to catch up on genitron which has units like brood war oh we're gonna see a new race let's go chiron 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 Chiron, a tech-heavy race with high-impact abilities that allow for a lot of battlefield positioning and special tactics. Nice. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Jomik is playing Chiron. I, uh, my apologies. I thought it was Genitron. My apologies. Chiron, Chiron. And spawning in the top right-hand corner of Glittering Ashes, we have... Oh. We have the Polish Protoss player down in the series, but looking to fight back with his main race. It is Jomik. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have his opponents. My apologies, not playing Genitron. I, I assumed that Genitron was more the Terran race, um, and I did see it in the lobby, which is why I assumed. So, my mistake, my mistake. But it is Chiron. It is Cognite for the Platinum Heroes. Chiron won Alex's fourth race context. Nice, nice. Alex, of course, he is... Um, he was a Ukrainian caster uh, back in the day. Nowadays, more busy with ASL. I think he's the director. Per se. Oh my god, there's a lot that we're catching up on. <laughs> One of the problems with Chiron is they don't have armored units until they tech up. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of like what I assumed and what I was waiting for. I was waiting for some kind of tech up there from Xiaomek to be able to deal with that army. And now, I mean, now the roles are reversed, so I'm curious if Cognite will have a better response, uh, assuming that we end up in a similar scenario. Pulsars do crazy high damage. They can shoot while moving like phoenixes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Volts balance shots like Glaze with an upgrade. Yo, wait, you're saying Volts, they have AoE air splash damage? Volts, they can shoot up, right? Yeah. 
does jump have a transition that makes sense? Not exactly. Typically, you want to get more gas and start filling up with tech. Uh, main tech is snipe with. Okay. They're like tempests that shoot from the ground. Mm. Crux snipe is like ghosts. Okay, we saw the crux. We saw the crux earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did take note of them earlier. Anyway, when it comes to Jomek, uh, get expand into a cyber core. Send that opener here from our Protoss player. Um, this is Chiron, not Genetron. Chiron, when it comes to uh, Cognite, is going to be opening up with a couple of vaults just to defend. Going to be going for his expansion as well. Sorry, I'm just I'm just catching up with uh, with the chat to try and catch up. Chiron, don't regenerate shields on their own. You have to be at your base, or you have to bring a unit called a ward. Okay, interesting. I like transitioning into inducers. Oh, <laughs> yes. I also I like the yes. I yeah yeah yeah. That's what he should have done. Transition into the inducer, Bobby. True. <laughs> uh, back in there we have a Twilight Council. Opener. Okay, so I appreciate that already. Jomek is going for a very different opener here as opposed to game number one, where Cognite did go for the Oracle for the Stargate opener. With said Twilight Council, uh, we can head towards Blink, we can head towards Charge. I imagine we're going to be getting into Blink from Jomek to have a little bit more map control and be more active on said map, but we'll see. We'll see for the time being. This Cognite is just working on the rest of his tech. Additional edifices. Of course, this is the production building that we did confirm earlier. Each one allows a charge, each one allows a warp in, essentially, or a materialization, if you will. Um, something interesting is that in game number one, Jomek did rush into charge or the charge version of the pariah. Um, and okay, yeah, yeah, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> charge is also on the way here for Cognite. I'm calling it charge, I'm sure it has its own term, but um, y you know what I mean. <laughs> Yo, the pulsar can speed buff, can speed buff units. That's crazy. I love that terrifying <laughs> and you mentioned it earlier but it can attack while moving as well so we're going to be able to force Jomek back for the time being again charge still on the way just focusing on our economy for now uh when it comes to again the group and the other matches going on there are some other high profile players like dark and hero and mia Mika. um but i did want to go for but um honestly it does feel like there's a bit of a skill gap between some of those players so i, I wanted to go for something a little bit closer and so far i'm content I'm content with Jomek and cognite Quite content. Third base here is being taken is on the way as well. Quite a fast throw, to be honest. Um relative to what I'm used to seeing. <laughs> and back at home, it's gonna be four gate blink. So Jomek he's gonna be moving out. This is a very strong, very aggressive build here from Jomek. I wouldn't call it all in, but a very aggressive on the, very aggressive nonetheless. You can expand behind it. But we'll see if Cognite can survive this and how he deals with this four gate blink. Again, charge should finish in time. It's still a couple of seconds away. Without it, we're going to have a hard time here engaging. On top of that, again, Blink will be available defensively as well for Jomek. Do you have an Oculus? Looks like a defensive feature. Uh, does it provide shield regeneration? Maybe. I don't know. But the Stalkers, they have arrived. Uh, immediately, Pulsar is going to go down. Oh, it wasn't the Pulsar. It was just... The, the, oh, it's a defensive feature from the building. Oh, I see. I understand. <laughs> Uh, the boys, they have to be pulled. So far, good target firing here from the vaults. And we are actually forcing this back. Oh my god! And Jomek is going to have to respect that. He did get some economic damage done. Um, I see. So, I, this ability that I saw earlier, that in my brain I was thinking, oh, it's like Chrono Boost. Um, I guess it speeds up the units themselves, including the probes, and that's how we get increased mining. And I guess it also affects uh, fighting units as well. I assume. Oh, as the prism does go down. Yo, the fact that vaults can shoot up and down is actually crazy. <laughs> like, like, unironically, we saw them in game one defending against oracles, which was which looked quite impressive. And to see them here go toe-to-toe -to -toe with stalkers as well is, uh, yeah, pretty insane. From here, Jomek has to back off, has to expand. And I would say that Cognite is in a decent position right now. Um, again, he has a faster third base, he has a better economy, he's working on the rest of his upgrades, and Jomek, he had to do damage. Going four gate blink, like, you're delaying so much here in order to be aggressive like that, and even with, by losing the war prism, like, Jomek, not looking too good. 
I'm concerned. Okay, the wall's not going. Ugh. Force said counterattack. Oh! <laughs> Fortunately, the crux won't quite be able to see it come into action here as it does get sniped. Good, co good control out of Jomek. Yeah, this thing. Oh, the Oculus gives it. Here it just forfeited. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah he does have WTL. I mean, wait, we're casting WTL later as well. But from here, Cognite is going to be taking another base, taking a fourth. <laughs> Thank you so much, Demi, for the raid. Yo, I saw this in the trailer. I'm, I'm, oh, I love it so much. <laughs> I, I love how um the Umbra. There we go. I, I was watching a couple of videos um just like to get a feel of of what these mods are and what these races are. And uh, this is a unit that really stood out visually to me, I should say. Now, Vanilla Fire, which of course looks like that defense. Um, we have the Umbra as well, which I love. I love the way it rolls around. <laughs> it's beautiful. Beautiful. Very aesthetic. Very aesthetic. Back at home, Jomek, he's just amassing a gateway army. He's on three base saturation. Going to be moving out with charge dots, with stalkers, and a couple of archons as well. He has no major form of splash damage like Colossus, like we saw previously from Cognite. Um, well, as he moves out, we do have a, a bit of a pariah run by here into the mineral line. Ay, ay, ay. Jomek thankfully does have a couple of warpins back at home. He's going to be able to defend. Oh, lo yo, give us some charge dots versus pariah. Let's go. <laughs> As across the map, Jomek is going to be focusing on his push. I guess it stays here? Does this grab vision? No shot. It does! It does grab vision. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> as Cognite is going to be pushing in as well. We do have a couple of Larkons, which is going to do so much damage to said army, but the Pariahs, they charge in. Oh. We do take down a lot of said Stalkers as well. What's interesting is the Umbras, they don't explode like Bailings, not at all. They do have projectiles. But we are being forced back here to the third base. Charge as they come in to reinforce as well. Only three at a time, though, with the boys being pulled. We are holding, but we're losing so many workers here in the natural. The Zels, they went ham, and Cognite is just losing far too much. 23 probes go down. Probes? Uh, what are they called? Converters, there we go. <laughs> 29 workers go down. Oh my god, I love that this thing bounces. It's so good. The juicer has arrived. Focus on the Archons just in time, and Cognite will hold. Did lose over 20 workers, but what I'm impressed by is because of how insane the economy of Cognite is, we're actually even in the worker counts. Uh, now, I'm not entirely sure if that's a good or a bad thing at this point, as oh, we do have a, a bunch of idle workers, unfortunately. But economically, Cognite is still in a good position. And more importantly, he's been able to take up. Uh, we saw earlier, we saw in game number one how uh, Jomek had kind of a difficult time really refining his army and actually being able to keep up as the game went on, as the Protoss player teched up. But it feels like Cognite has been able to transition a little bit better here. I say it feels like because um, I don't know how much value only one of these inducers really does provide. I imagine we're going to be getting into more. Um, this is so cool, though. We're going for a roll, a roll by Papi. <laughs> oh, my God. Umbras are going to be moving out, looking to potentially shut down this fourth base and potentially force a cancel. I imagine they do quite a lot to buildings, question mark. Uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, we are going to be able to take them down. I'm loving the scouting Umbra as well, just to keep an eye on what is going on. That's a kill, not a cancel on the Nexus. Ay, ay, ay. 400 minerals down the drain here for Jomek. And from here, we can just roll away. <laughs> uh, we should be able to roll away, but alas, we have a bit of a sandwich being set up. Jomek, he does miss them, though. Zelts do miss the Umbras, and yeah, Cognite is going to be able to escape. That was almost a beautiful surround and almost a beautiful sandwich from Jomek, but uh, unfortunately, not able to catch them in the end. Behind this, Cognite working on another fifth base, building themselves up. A ward inducer. Interesting. Okay, so I, I'm curious as to when it comes to our tech units here for Cognite. Um, it's really interesting that we're actually not amassing too many of them. Obviously, we have our gateway army or our, you know, or our, our mass amount of vaults. Jeez, that's a lot of vaults. <laughs> um, but yeah, we only have a single inducer. We have a single ward, a single crux as well. To 
is interesting to me. That this isn't a, uni a unit that we are just making multiple of. Do I have vision here? We do. Okay. <laughs> it's everywhere, Poppy. Jesus. Meanwhile, Jomek has been taking up into Disruptors. And how good can we split against these Purification Evers? That's going to be the next question here. Um, yeah, so the dynamic that Disruptors have with Protoss, Zerg, and Terran is very distinct. I'm curious how the Chirons can deal with this and if they're going to be able to avoid those Novas in time or disable them in any way, shape, or form as Jomek is pushing on forward. Not too sure if he can be stopped here. Do you have a big counterattack? Across the map. And this will be going off. Yeah, and with four of these four of these disruptors, like we just cannot engage, we're gonna be zoned away. Oh, we're diving in. And we're just gonna try to focus on as many of these disruptors as we can. We control from Cognite actually to be able to focus down one of said disruptors, but the never goes off! Oh, a massive connection there. Almost half the vaults going down. But across the map, we lost the fourth. Jomek, he has lost his fourth base. He is struggling here. Struggling to maintain his economy. Never goes off once again. Big connection. Cognite is rolling back home. Come back, Bappy. Come back. <laughs> but yeah, even though Jomek, his economy is in shambles, his main army is still standing strong and... Ugh, the Novas, they just keep connecting, Papi. Behind this, we're getting into a, ti a Titans. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> we'll be working towards Titans as well. Good target firing on at least one of those disruptors as well. Forcing back the army of Jomek. We're going to try and dive in again, but we take some Novas to the face. Oh, my God. These units are so tanky. Jesus. They really are Titans. They took two Novas, and they're still standing. That's crazy. <laughs> so that's how we deal with them. You know, we just we just take them to the face. As impressive as that's been, there are still additional Novas coming at it. Oh! oh. One of those Titans almost does go down. So does it take four Novas to kill one Titan? That's crazy. I love it. <laughs> I love it because um, it's something that StarCraft 2 has been... Um, a little bit criticized for uh, is that because units die so quickly, like things can end or fights can end in an instance as well. To have a unit that can just tank Novas to the face like that is something that I'm just I'm not used to seeing. Like visual, like my brain is like having a hard time comprehending the fact that we can do this, and I I appreciate it. <laughs> We are going to be moving out over Charge to try and keep said Nexus alive. Once again, Novas will connect. Oh. oh my god, one of the Titans finally will fall. We still have a couple of Disruptors left, but I guess our last Nova's on cooldown. It is on cooldown. Cognite just busting on through. And without these purification overs, like, how do we really deal with this? One, two of them get focused down. And that is it. That is all the splash damage gone here for Jomek. And now the Titans, they can just waddle it in, Papi. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. The base will fall. So will the mineral line. And Cognite has gone out of control. Yeah, GG gets called. And Cognite gets the 2-0. GG. Oh, my God. Not gonna lie, something that I was uh <laughs> something that I was not expecting here coming into this. I favored Jomek. I was like, alright, let's let's see how well Jomek does. I'm gonna take notes and we'll see if Cognite can keep up, but yeah, really impressive. Not gonna lie. Um there is a bit of a skill gap between these players, so for Jomek to sorry, for Jomek to even fold to here, um despite even picking his main race, despite even going Protoss, it, I'm I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. GG well played. But this is also like what I was looking forward to is that you have these established pro players in StarCraft and then you have these other players that are more accustomed to the mod and actually invest time into practicing and, and actually like exploring the game and, and refining it as well. Um, 
So I'm excited here for Cognite. I'm excited to see if he can take it to some of these other big names in the tournament. As Cognite will take his first series, uh, the first of many in this group. The first of many.